Hi, I'm Mayor Al Bolas, City of New Franklin. Welcome to our video council meetings. Uh, you can get copies of this meeting at our city hall or just call 330-882-4324. All right, we're going to get started with the uh, committee tonight. I'm just going to give you a quick run now. We have one first meeting. We have three second, three thirds. Before we get into that, we're going to go ahead and uh, talk to Terry. Appreciate you coming in, Terry. I guess we're going to talk about going possibly to uh, the big push recycle bins. Yeah, what we're here to talk about, I'm guessing. Yeah, go ahead. Hey, good evening. Uh, I think I've met everybody. I'm Terry Thompson with the Public Services. And um, about three and a half years ago, we started a contract in Franklin, which included 18 gallon recycling bins picked up weekly. Um, while they were very effective at the time, I think what's happened is as people become more and more acclimated to recycling and more and more material goes in, unfortunately, as the winds blow through Northeast Ohio, uh, they sometimes that material ends up in other people's yards. Uh, the answer is we see other communities going routinely is going from the 96 to 65 gallon carts as you see over here. Uh, the carts will hold about five times as much as that 18 gallon bin will hold. Um, you can pack it down in, uh, you just get a lot more material in them. It's contained so you don't have wind issues. Uh, those bins have a tendency also sometimes to blow out into the street or blow into the ditch. And, and these carts, while they still can catch the wind, they're, they, they're not so easy to blow around. Well, what I would like for council to consider is the possibility of switching from those 18 gallon bins to a large cart like this for the recycling. Uh, for all residents. Uh, we have 18 months left on that initial contract and then there are five one-year extensions available to the, the city as well. One of the hurdles that we have to come over and come by is uh, the, the cost for the cart, the deployment of the cart, and then to accelerate the depreciation. We typically do it over 10 years and in this case we're only going to be able to do it over six because that's the term of what's left in the contract. So uh, if it's something the council would consider and something that Mr. Macera feels comfortable with, that we would also request that you at this time extend that those five one-year extensions, put those in place as well, so we can depreciate these carts over that period. Um, what you would also see I think the uh, Solid Waste District would support this. These are probably conservative numbers, but you'll see a 30 to 60 percent increase in the recycling numbers as well. Um, what that means to the city is the grant money that comes back from the Solid Waste District should increase. So uh, there's just there just isn't a reason why you shouldn't do it. I guess uh, from a standpoint of cleanliness for the community, uh, ease of using. Uh, and unless Mr. Macera feels uncomfortable with it, uh, I think that's the, you know, the only hurdle that we really would have to, to deal with. I'm not sure, but, you know, pressure's on. Yeah, so say, Tom, help us out here. That's on you. I just like to say, Terry, yeah, I've had one. I've had the big car. I love it. But yeah, I, we fill it up almost every week. Really? I guess we're going to have to, yeah, it's too much. We hardly have any trash anymore. Well, one thing Terry and I were talking about was possibly going with 96 gallon as opposed to 65 for the recycle. And maybe that's the thing we, we should look at. I mean, I'm not sure that would be good for everybody, but I mean, there's probably some people out there. I mean, I guess if I had to start trying to compact it down or whatever we had to do, but I mean, I'm all for it. The, uh, the alternative, we also could add if you need know, two parts. I mean, recycling is pretty inexpensive to process for us. And once the truck's there, you know, the cart's pretty inexpensive for the most part. So putting two carts in it that people like yourself, and, and I know Judy's pretty adamant about recycling. She's pretty diligent. So um, anybody that really needs it, then if we have to put two carts in, we probably can do that as well. The, uh, the other part of this thing is recycling would go from weekly to every other week. And I just want to make sure I mention that. So we do we pick up some efficiencies, which helps offset the cost of the cart. In, in squeezing down that period of depreciation, and the <coughs> it's about four hundred thousand dollars. So, yeah, Tom brought up a good point uh, two weeks ago, but it was agreed 
and has that service now. And sometimes you're at the point where you don't know which week it is. Is this the week that I put the recycling on, or? Another neighborhood. We'll see everybody. Yeah, that's what, yeah, that's what <laughs> yeah. you have to do if you look in the neighborhood to see if that's Well, we'll, we'll send the calendar to the city. Uh, we would do a mailing initially. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we would send a calendar to the city annually, update 216, 2017, 18, 19, 20, 21, that would show the recycling dates and the recycling week. So people would log on or they could come here and pick up a hard copy of the city. So, so can I ask a question, Dave? Yes. So uh, what if like his father's got the 18 gallon bin and you want to explain that? Yeah, I mean, what he does, Terry, is he's got a little downhill driveway, so he just pushes it down with his roof. He can't, and he's got the uh, he's got the bag service, so he can push that bag down there. He's not going to be capable of taking that recycling cart down, and we've talked about that. We have a lot of elderly folks <laughs> in New Franklin that I think that would could be a problem for. It's, so I don't know how we handle that situation. I mean, obviously I could go down and do it for him, but that doesn't, I'm not gonna go do it for everybody and all the elderly citizens in New Franklin. Well, that would fall under the carry out. Well, that, that was the question, that's what was brought up is, you know, would the, you know, would someone come up and get that and, and physically take yeah. it down? I, 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 that's, he would qualify for that carry out service and I appreciate the fact that he would take his trash down there anyway, but maybe if he wants to continue to take the trash down, but we go and get to recycling and that's available to those that can't help him. Okay. So that's a, I mean, that's something that was in the original big specs that we provided for. Okay. How many people use that with the trash now? Do you know? Uh, I'm going to say somewhere in the 200 range. Okay. Uh, only because I think there were about 70 in Coventry for one that. Okay. So I know it's under 300. So. I mean, I have a couple questions, unless some of you do. I, I, one is Coventry. Have you, it, it, you know, Coventry is part of our contract now. Have you talked to them? Have you, is that this going to include Coventry? And they haven't made the decision. I think they're waiting to see what you do. I don't okay. know that if you do it, they'll do it. Um, but you've talked to them. I've talked to them originally uh, last year, I think it was March or April, I talked to them. And Ed liked it, and I think Dave liked it. Tom was comfortable with it, but you know, they just, it was really more of an information <laughs> made at that point, so we didn't get to the <coughs> hard, hard dates and the reality of it yet. You know, as far as the extra 39 cents on the remaining contract, did you know that was my issue before when Republic proposed this? When was that about a, maybe a year ago? So I, I mean, I'll have to look at that because I, 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 to me, that was always my biggest problem and issue is that we put bid specs out there, people bid on them, you bid on them, you won the contract based on a certain price. I don't know that we have the legal ability to raise that. I'd have to look at that issue. Okay. And, I mean, I'll just throw out there. Yeah, and I'll throw out there in green. They they gave us, you know, they put the carts in and we weren't charged anything additional. Now it was at the, I believe, didn't we renew the five year contract? Or we, is that? I think it's been five years. I, it's, it's coming close. I yeah. thought they, I thought they did, but I, I don't know. I don't remember. What I read exactly. And I think it increased the rate too. Yeah. But not as part of the overall bid, the, the rate increased okay. each year, but not just because we've okay. got the recycling uh, cars now. Well, you, this is kind of leading the crowd here tonight, so I understand. I, I'm here comfortable. I'll feel you. Okay. I, I mean, yeah, I have to look at this. I, <coughs> Tom, is the one year, five one year renewals under the same terms and conditions? The five one year renewals, or can you? Well, would that be an option? Look at the contract that way. That maybe if we can't do it in this eighteen months, after we renew it, we can change it. If well, we wouldn't be able to add okay. a cost. I, I I don't believe okay. we'd be able to add it, and that's not what you're you're just asking for additional money in the, right. the remaining right. year and a half. Oh, that in well, the five years, it would be actually for the remainder of the. If we do the five year. 
which now is now between the, the remaining six and a half years. Adding 39 cents per month. Okay. That, that, and that picks, I, up, picks up the extra five years. It's going to 2021. Right? Yeah. Right. 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 But what Terry is saying is that we have a price right now for those additional five years. Yes. And a base price. They want, they want to increase that by 39 cents for each category okay. in that five years above and beyond the bid that we have. So and I would have to look at that. And you're afraid that with the bid <coughs> that went out, somebody would say, had we known. Exactly. That's what I'm afraid of, is, is another company, one of the other companies that bid, and, and Kimball, because I mean, they, they were the ones that tried to object to your bid before, some minor things that they come in and say, hey, if we'd have known this, our bid might have been different. If we'd have known we could have put the recycled carts out there and... Well, we would have done it without it, yeah. Yeah, because we you've changed, we have to change the price. Yes. Yes. Okay. And the price went up in green, but only because the contract said it goes up yeah. each year. So, could we... <clears throat> They have the right to, they have the unilateral right to automatically renew for five one year terms. No, we have to. Oh, we okay. Have to, we have the right All to right. renew for five. So, this years. is something we really, really, really want to do. We will have to revisit if we can't do it, if we're going to do it in 18 months. If we have to revisit, yes. Right, yes. right. Okay. Now, now Republic has, the, has the, uh, the right, I would say, as Kimball did, to say we're not going to use those bins anymore and we're going to use the carts. And we're going to provide them to everyone, and we're going to pick it up every two weeks without an increase. I think you, you certainly have that right to do it, but it's the increase that, that causes my concern and something that I need to look at. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Paul. What type of time frame do we need then? Well, I don't know. I, 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 I mean, I'm not trying to pin you down, but I mean, for is there any time constraints that you're in? Uh, actually, no, we're not. I mean, we were, what we were trying to do is not do it in the wintertime. Okay. So All right. I was trying to think in my head if, if this was something that the city would embrace, and let's just assume that you decided to move forward with it tonight, and I know that's not. Yeah. 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 But yeah. Just, yeah. If you move forward with it, then um, it takes about 45 days for us to uh, request the capital, get it approved, get the cards in, and get ready to deploy, and then about two weeks to deploy the cards to everybody. So from the time it, from the time you had a yes, you'd need about two months to make it happen? Uh, I would say 45 days to get the cards in place, and another, once everybody's got them, then you know, we'll, we'll also spend that time telling people it's going to go to every other week, say September 1st. And then check the website, we'll have calendars available at the City Hall, and then we would also do mailing. So I would say September. We could we could conceivably do September first. We could move to October first if that's and then that, that includes me, that includes keeping the eighteen gallon bin you have now. Just to, you don't want it back, right? Uh, some people just don't want them, so we'll pick them up. But if they want to keep them, then can you put them in your recycle bin? <laughs> you can. Uh, <laughs> Actually, the solid waste district north here would probably like to have them, so okay. uh, we could probably help them out by just giving them to them. I mean, just from a personal standpoint, I know a lot of people in green. I, I keep mine in my garage where it always was, and I can put my <laughs> recycle there, and then when it gets filled, I carry it out and put it in the cart so that it's, mm -hmm. it's a little more convenient. But keep in mind also that, I, I mean, I need to look at this, I need to look at the bid specs, the contract, and all that. If I say it's possible, council has to authorize yeah. and I don't right. think that, that was gonna be, before we expend those resources, perhaps in having you do, what I'm thinking could be some significant research. I can see this going down one way and you having to open up, you know, legally. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just want to say I would support this also, um, and Dave supports it, so just, I would like to know how the, my other fellow members of council feel before we have Tom expend resources of That's this true. community when we find out that really it's just this end. I Could I ask a question? Sure. Have you had this type of problem arise before? Because I know when you first told us about the bidding that we could add on, Tom and I were both shocked, but your attorneys had done the research. So have you come across anything like this that your attorneys 
have done the research so that we could save some of Tom's time um, and it would help them a little bit? I think it really depends on how the city is structured. <laughs> and uh, We've seen it done with amendments to contracts. It just, it really is, and I really, with all due respect, it's all about what you feel comfortable with. And, and I don't want to, yeah. I don't want to press anything. I mean, if Tom, whatever Tom says, that's, I'm good with it. I'm perfect see? with that. But yeah, <laughs> see the proper attitude. We all have <laughs> the proper attitude. All be more like there. Uh, but you've gone through this process with some other communities. Yes. Some similar to this, where the extensions, a slight increase, and it was done without a rebid. Many times if it's on their request because okay. you know they're seeing other communities do this and they right. just they want so it. Or at least theoretically it's possible. Yeah, it may be possible. I mean I mean I mean it's been three and a half years, so <clears throat> I, I have to re-look at sure. what we bid, what the bid package was, and what the contract was in. And then I think maybe the mayor and I want to talk to Coventry too. Mm -hmm. If you want to, you know, because we're we're trying to make be in this together. I mean, the idea was to, you know, regionalize this. We were hoping to, to tag Green along at some point, but they moved to their own <coughs> beat over there. So, so just just a part of yours. If you would break it down in your billing, and your monthly fee would stay the same, but you would have another line item for car cost. And in theory, your monthly fee didn't go up. Just an idea. Just a I mean, I, I'm okay with it because no, I'm, I'm, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not just saying you know, just the, the increase. And, and you're right; it doesn't sound like a great increase. But keep in mind, when this happens, you're going to have some residents out of here that, that are, are going to say something about it. I would think mm -hmm. uh, we've had that experience before. So it's forty cents a month, thirty-nine mm -hmm. cents a month, not each okay, two weeks. Okay. But people don't like change. Sure. They, and, and some people, I mean, it doesn't sound like a lot, 40 cents a month, but to some people, that could be a lot. And and to some people, that having to un, you know understand that we can only do it every other, we only recycle every other week now, and how do we remember that? People don't like change. So you will have some people coming out here sure. and we making don't, comments. Sure, so. we can address that too, why we thought this was a more recent approach towards recycling and refuse pickup in our community just as you did when you started this whole process. No, no, I, no, I it was a process. Actually easier. Huh? It was a process. It was yeah. a process. No, it was. So I mean, and people that were adamantly so opposed to it. That. Yeah. And it's a city-wide. It's not an opt-out. We do it for you. Okay. It's everybody. Yes. Yeah. yeah, you can't choose to take the card. I mean, that's the whole idea of the economy of scale. You want everybody using it. Because now, when we have the carts in green, the truck comes by, we put it at the side of the road, and the cart picks it up and dumps it in there. And it is nice. You can you know, put your newspapers in there. You can put everything in there. I guess I'm a little skeptical, but I'm assuming the companies are separating it once they do that. Yeah, and all, I mean, our, we're taking ours to Green Star right now. We have a contract with waste management to process it and another something else that happened. But, yeah. Yeah. Hey, Terry. Uh, on your report here on number two, yes. is that what we have right now? 38 homes on the bag service? That's it? Yes. That's what you had. Actually, I didn't check that again. That's from last year's numbers. So okay. Change those. But I would guess that's probably about it. Uh, we used to have like 300 word opt out, remember? And then everybody changed their mind. Yeah. Things. Yeah. If people wanted to opt out, we said okay, and then after they saw how well it was working, they go, oh, well, maybe we would like to take their trash to work every week. Sure, every day. Day. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Now, Mary, remember, if you notice, that's 38 homes um, on recycling and trash, so that's probably the only way we have a count, because if, for instance, if I lived here and I came in to buy bags but I didn't recycle, I wouldn't be charged that recycling rate. I would only be paying for the bags that I used to set out in. We would have no idea who those people are until you know, bags show up. Because we do have more like 6,000 households. Okay. Um, I'll figure this out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Does anybody have anything else for Terry? Okay. How about it? Paul, you're on board with this if we this can make it happen. Harry, where are you at? Mm -hmm. I'm with it. I mean, okay. I'm with the opt-out, so I can't. 
Oh, okay. Oh, I did right. my okay. <laughs> No, I'm good with it. I, yeah, I mean, I, 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 we have that too, but. All right, Jerry, appreciate it, and see what Tom comes up with, and make sure they'll be getting I'll, back with you. I'll mention one other thing. I dropped off a, a slick for everybody as well. Um, anybody that's got an account set up with us, they can log on and pay online. There's there's a lot of different services they can get online if they need that through public services. Uh, log on, set up an account online. It doesn't cost me anything, you know, it takes a couple minutes. So, okay. Residents that have you know, questions about bills or whatever, they can also it'll email right to our customer service department and they'll respond within a couple of Also let people know this is printed on vegetable-based inks on 55% recycled paper. How about that? How about that? Okay. The last one's garbage. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. And at any time, if anybody has any questions, go ahead and take them. Okay. All right. Thanks, Terry. Thank you, Terry. Thanks, Terry. Appreciate it. All right. We're going to move on with our committee meeting here. Uh, I'm going to turn it out of the call for finance. Uh, call finance to order at 622. All members are present. Uh, we got the first reading on resolution 15 R39, authorizing transfer of funds. Uh, from the general fund to the police fund, hundred thousand dollars. General fund to dispatch fund, fifty thousand dollars. This is uh, just a standard uh, transfer to uh, fund those departments. Yes. All within budget, appropriation, yes. and everything. Yes. Uh, does anybody have any questions on those? Oh yes, I, yes. Who emailed it to me? Yes. All right. I'm going to uh, expect to request a waive of three readings on that one. Get that taken care of. Uh, next, we have resolution 15R36. Uh, authorizing New Franklin to submit an application for Ohio Public Works Commission State Capital Improvement and uh, executing certificate, certification of local funds, $375,000. Uh, Susan? Al, who wants to speak to that? Al, you're the sponsor? Um, At 15R36, the certification for the yes. uh, Public Works. Um, you know, we've been trying to go ahead and widen that. Uh, Manchester Road from Vanderhoof all the way down to past Dollar General. And we're applying for uh, as much as we can get, and we'd like to apply for OPWC funds. And we managed to get uh, Jennifer, uh, has helped us out quite a bit. Uh, I'll read this. Uh, Jennifer, you want to read it or not? It's just the one, just the one paragraph. Jennifer Six has been helping us out uh, with uh, John's Road, trying to lighten that up a little bit, uh, with um, highway distributing, with the employees that they're gonna be getting in there. So I'm just reading one, one paragraph from uh, Dave Martin from a GPD group, because I know Jen's been working on this real hard. Uh, Jennifer has struck gold again in the form of a $150,000 commitment from ODOT to participate in the 90, Three widening. Jennifer will be coordinating the award letter, which should be coming next week to Mayor Bolas, and I have it right here. Um, that's on top of the $225,000 from Jobs Ohio that have committed, and $50,000 from Summit County uh, from their community partnership program. Um, these fundings of $425,000 counts as our local share in terms of the OPWC application. Um, and we just updated the funding options described in trailing. You want to go from there? Yeah, what, what Jennifer was able to do, I mean, she did a tremendous job. We had a phone conference last week. The mayor was at a seminar, but it was Jennifer and I and Dave Martin and Josh Slaga, Dave and Josh, were both from GPD. Jennifer was able to get ODOT to commit $150,000 to this project. She was able to get Jobs Ohio, which is Team NEO is another name yes. for it, to commit $225,000. This is just money that they're going to put into the project. I think the mayor was instrumental in getting the county to pitch in $50,000, and then the city will be part of that. That means a couple of different things. One, the, the more participants you have, the more points you get for OPWC. The other thing that it's allowed GPD to do in putting the application together is 
we're only asking OPWC for half of the 1.5 million that's needed for that project. So that's going to increase our points considerably because with the now with the ODOT 150,000, the, the Jobs Ohio 225,000, our local money and the $50,000 from the county, we're going to be able to cover half of that project ourselves uh, with that local money. And that way we're asking OPWC for only half of it. Increasing our points, Dave Martin said that that what Jennifer was able to do brought us to, this is the old spreadsheet. I got a new one from Josh Slager the other day. Our points are up to, I think, 126. And Dave said he has never seen a project turned down when it has that many points. The only variable this year is that the city of Akron is asking for considerable funds from OPWC because they're doing a, if you remember, Akron wanted to redo the inner belt uh, and change some of those that configuration. So they're asking for about three million, I think Dave said. So that will impact us, but still for a small local community project to have 126 points, we should be in pretty good shape. Well, this happened before with us when we uh, did the uh, intersection at the upper deck at the golf course. And we were bumped a year, but we applied again. And uh, so with the fiscal year, I think yeah, that, I, yeah, it will be okay. So. Yeah, we got bumped because that we happened to be on the same time that Goodyear, Bridgestone and Goodyear right. were both doing their improvements. Well, when would we anticipate, assuming it all went well, uh, when would we anticipate our actual expenditure? Okay, well, this year. Yeah. You know, well, we've yeah, already we'll paid ahead. up front yeah. is the engineering. We've right. done that. You approved that several months back for 116000 uh, this won't be due until next year if we get the right. if we get the approval, which would be I think we need it by June 30th. The well, the the, the application deadline is June 26th. So if we're going to move on this, we need to have that authorization passed tonight. But the we usually hear about year. funding in September or October this year, but it's for the the state's fiscal year of. 2017. Yeah, 2017, which actually starts in June 2016. So the project, the money would be, the rest of the money would not be needed until next year. Well, I mean, no, I mean, the 375 is in addition to the money that's already been spent on the engineering. No, no, the hundred thousand is part of that 375. So we have spent, we've we've already spent a hundred thousand, or we're going to be spending a hundred thousand to make it shovel ready. And, and all of this budgeted. Are we comfortable from a budget standpoint that the funds, well, first of all, we have to be or we can't certify it. Fair statement? Correct. Okay. This uh, just ups our ante. In this well, I understand, but I'm just talking about the expenditure itself. Is there any any issue whether whether or not that we have funds available to, you know, or this is going to create any any, any problem for us? And right. We, have, we have the funds. <clears throat> Right. Well, we, we, are, we have already appropriated the funds for the 116000 which is for the engineering, so it would be the remainder that we would need to appropriate for next year. Yeah. So that's, you know, we've talked about that and, and using road funds if we have to. Okay. And we have the road funds to do that next um, year. Once we... Uh, if council approves this tonight, uh, and then the uh, we, we would find out in the fall, October or so, September, October, we, we'll have to find out by then because and the, then, the Jobs Ohio and the ODOT are going to be giving us agreements that the mayor is going to have to sign probably by the end of September if we want that money. Let's say that we that, that we find out that we've been approved. Okay. Uh, are, are we committed by virtue of taking action tonight, or at that point? Something unforeseen came about. We said, you know what? We just can't afford to do this. I suppose you can always turn the grant down. Okay, well, that's what I'm asking. I, mean, I, I, I can't I, imagine why we I would. I'm just, I'm just I'm asking. I can't imagine why you would not be able to turn it down at that point. Okay, right. but we right. need the commitment now in order to make that grant gotcha. application. Okay, well, yeah, you wanted to make distinguish whether or not we're actually making the commitment tonight. I, you know, the real commitment would be if and when we're approved. Well, you have yes. The real commitment is when you appropriate the okay. funds. Okay. All right. Any other questions on this? But I mean, Jennifer Six did a great 
job with this. I mean, working, she was working pushing the people. Hard. Yeah, she was pushing us hard, but that was good. So yeah. you know, no, that's great news. I mean, that's three hundred seventy-five thousand dollars that she got committed from wow. state agencies to participate in this. That's, that's beautiful. That's a one fourth of the cost. Of and I understand project. what you, you know the significance of that relative to the points towards approval. So and, and part of that is due to. Uh, highway distributing being there and the jobs that they are going to be adding because that's where Jobs Ohio and ODOT came in is if it's going to create jobs and tax revenue then that's, okay. that's what they support. And this will widen John's road back to about the back gate so we increase that traffic. I need to increase that, be able to handle that traffic so. Any questions? Uh, it sounds like then we need to take action on this tonight. Yes, please. All right, well, I'll be looking to waive the third reading. On, uh, yes. This is the second reading of the R36. That's it for uh, finance. Uh, and we will adjourn finance at 632. All right, thanks. We'll move into laws of Which will come to order at 632. The first item is ordinance number 150 04. This has to do with the one percent increase to the income tax rate and Tom had indicated last week when I think it was just introduced that he wanted us to have this before us but we still had some time and we wanted to go to the three readings or do you feel I, Mayor and I talked about it right. I guess if you're if you're going to do this and you're going to put it on the ballot I would prefer that it be done tonight if you're going to do it if you need more time to think about it then yes you have more time because the deadline is not until August 5th but in my mind I'm the, the personality I'd like it passed and I can take it down to the Board of Elections they can look it over and if they tell me hey you screwed something up we still have time to fix it that that would be my only thought so but if you want to take a third reading fine but if you're going to put it on the ballot let's go <coughs> <clears throat> Anybody? It's going to be up to the people to vote on. We're right, but I think we've all decided we have to do something. We have to get something on the ballot. We decided this was the way to go. It comports with other communities. We're not asking for anything that's that isn't going on in surrounding areas. And as David said, let's let the you know the voters decide if they will accept that increase or not. So with that, also the next one is 150-04, uh, and that is the ordinance providing for an increase to the new Franklin Municipal Income Tax, which is not levied at the rate of 1%, or it's the necessity of an election. So these would go hand in hand. We would we support the one, we would support the other. And uh, with that being said, I think the committee supports it, the rest of council um, supports passing this tonight. Is that correct? And then that, like you said, Tom, if there's any issues, that'll give you maybe some clearance. I think give me a little bit of time to take something that's the back here if we need to. I don't anticipate any, but you just never know. 15-0, I believe that, is that concrete planning and zoning? July 9th. So we, the, the, their public hearing. So after July 9th, they'll have their public hearing. They, being planning and zoning commission, will have a public hearing, and we'll make a recommendation to council, and then council will schedule a public hearing. And that's on all three pieces. That's correct. We'll ask for a uh, time on that, Mr. Stuff. Uh -huh. We adjourn at uh, 6:35. And, and just on that, I did talk to Barry and Mark adjourned. today, and they sent. Uh, letters to everyone just as we did with the RL changes and Barry said they've only gotten a few phone calls with some questions so uh, people are the, the people who have properties who are affected by this have been notified I did have one call I want to know if they're doing this for the taxes that if it was zoned to commercial for zoning change to commercial or whatever would it increase their taxes and I said no not that I'm aware of. Not that I'm aware of. It's <coughs> the use of the property. Yeah, yeah, that's what I said. We were trying to get it. everything kind of lined up down to there. It's just all over the place. And that's basically what planning and zoning is looking to do. So. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, if anybody else gets questions like that, the, the value of the property is not going to change unless the use of the property changes. Mm -hmm. All right. I think that's all our legislation. 
anything for us for committee?
Okay. Can you have it? But the smaller ones, they should be able to go around back. They should. It's the same as uh, you know, the same as the front. The semis, the beer trucks, are not going to get in the back. It's a little tight. Actually, some of them do. Yeah. Can I mean, I'm sure they could. They go into tighter spots. Can I ask you why yeah. they can't go in the back? In the city of Kent, I see them wheeling them down for blocks away. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't see a problem. Like, what would be a problem with them? Well, like even in the city of Kent, I'll give you an example. Like on Ray's Place, that's a one lane alley right there, and they block, we block it all the time. It's an alley. And we block yeah. the road all the time in front of Ray's Place with the beer trucks. Um, I can get around. I, I, I work there. Yeah. And I can get around them all the time. I've never been blocked where I can't get around them. And the alley is closed, by the way. The Ray's? Yeah. What? The what is the alley. The alley you're referring to. So we really do. Okay. Oh. Yeah. It, it opens, it closes, it doesn't. Yeah. Here, here's some. We have yeah, we'll pass it down here. Here's packets. They're just three pages. And another issue we had during the winter, I think everyone is aware of, is the snow fillers and the vehicles going on the lake, four-wheelers, automobiles, trucks, oh, all night nice. long. Oh. No, no, well, they're accessing through the fire lane, which is right between our house and Holly's. So they're going back and forth through the fire lane all night. I was going to say, I, I do believe the four-wheelers and the snowmobilers are legally allowed on the lake. Till 11. Till 11. Right. No access on the lake. The truck for a vehicle is not, though. Yeah, you no. cannot take a vehicle on a lake. They have, they have an ORV sticker. These units do. Yeah. And they don't. So you've got like, cars, trucks, uh, yeah. suburbans. Those, those are all. You can't have There's no cars. And they bust. Thanks. Well, I know. Did you have anything to check? If there's anything we can do to block off the fire lane so there's no access to the lake during the winter? Yeah. Hey, I don't know about that either because they get they get on everywhere. I got the problem with quad runners and some of running my property right now with gas and they just walk through. And hey, nothing you can do about it unless you can catch it. Yeah. Just the, 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 the police don't have the equipment to catch it. Yeah. I don't I don't know what to say. It's a problem there. You need that open to the fire department. Um but we could always put a gate across there with a fire department lock. But then you have, you know, is it a public access? It really is. I mean, it, it is a, an access road that, just like Rollins or any of the other roads we talked about down to the lake. I mean, if you block that one off, they're going to run somewhere else. And they're going to bu buzz around. There's too many ways to get to that lake. I know the police sat out front and they were arresting them as they came off the lake. And no. then the state came out and walked on the lake and arrested them on the lake. Which was one time, but it was nice. It was OD, uh, ODNR. Yeah, they didn't stop them. It's, you know, it's a channel. Right. One minute. <laughs> yeah, I know where it's a harbor. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, we can run through this with some other bars. I mean, what, what did we do? Upper deck, I mean, we had big issues with, didn't we? Pretty much the same, same thing. Did we some kind of accord with them? or? They just kept the music at nine over there, I believe, now, but. You can't really, you know, it's all by ordinance, you know, at 10 o'clock's the cutoff. You're going to change the law and make it 8 o'clock cutoff or, you know, and then they have a, a point if you're inside the music's permeating outside, what are you supposed to do? They're bars. And that place, by the way, was jammed back in the 50s. But the, I imagine the, uh, the speakers probably weren't that's good that's good you know you know that from all the pictures that you've seen in the past one of the big problems is this is it's in a neighborhood and that's what and they just don't seem to have respect at all that's the biggest problem i think I, I, I don't know what i could do but i have to pass laws you know how can we enforce the noise on ordinance we call the police Nothing happens. They drive by. We call them again. They drive by. We call them the third time, and they stop. I mean, this goes on for hours. After 11, after 12, it's almost every weekend. I know the calls aren't being logged. I don't know why, but I've been logging them myself. 
We basically just need your help. You can help us, we appreciate it. I mean, we, can, we, we got the noise ordinance. They can get on there, and, you know, I don't know what. To talk, talk, talk to talk to Dan, see what you do. Well, Check. And we had a meeting up here one time, a couple months ago, right? And yeah, I mean, a year ago, last, last fall. Last summer we had two meetings. Right. And that trash. I mean, maybe That's we can, yeah, you know, how about we ask the owner to come here? <coughs> and just, uh, you know, ask the owner to come here in two weeks and, and let's address some of these things, see what he's got to say. We did that. I'm talking about council doing that here. Oh, okay. I'm just looking for some way to, yeah. because again, I mean, these are difficult legal problems. Mm -hmm. Noise ordinances are historically difficult to enforce. Uh, I I did talk to Eric a little bit. He did tell me he's probably not going to have more bands on Sunday. But still, I've been there, you know, by boat at 11, 11 30, and the place is really jamming, you know, with a lot of people, just like all the other places that we have on the lake. So. And it isn't a tight neighborhood there. Well, that's my home, and I have to be yeah. on weekends a lot of times. But you know what? You moved next to a bar. I didn't. What are you supposed to do quiet. about that? It, it was, was a nice. neighborhood it, bar. I mean, I got, I'm thinking both sides. You I know, know. I understand. I, I yeah. tried to do too. For 15 it, years, we've been in this property. It's just been since Max sold the property that we've had a problem. Max was very respectful. He yeah. was very respectful. I understand that. And that's the problem. We're not getting any respect from our neighbor. If there's anything we can do about that, it's the social media and all the other stuff that he's put out there, really. And Max was in a different ballgame. He owned the property, he didn't have any debt. This guy has to make money to stay in business. Max Otherwise, originally had debt. I know Max had debt. He yeah. sold him well. He didn't have a debt this guy had got. Well, well, we we yes, 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 dollars today's dollars. I mean, well, I, we have debt I don't know what to say right now. I can just bring Eric back in here. He kind of talked with him about the agreement that we had prior to that. You had minutes on that, didn't you? You had a meeting the first time? I was just baffled why he didn't have a dumpster instead of them four rolling containers. He does have a dumpster in the on back. On top of them containers? Sitting all around? Yeah, but they fill up the dumpster in the back and they fill up, and it gets question. overflowing yes. in the back, too. So those you know, and there's no right. any resolutions there. I have to look at my records too. I think that's a good idea. Let's get Eric in here. Yeah. Yeah. Let's okay. do that. See what we can do because. You make me copy this for you. Right. See if we can come up about 6 30 next week or two weeks. Uh, you know, this is public record now, okay? Oh, that's fine. If somebody wants to, okay. I don't have a problem with that. Everything I've stated here is fact. Yeah, I understand. I think that's what I guess we need to do. Uh, well, we can't make him come, but we can, yeah, yeah, we can ask him to come. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean. What do you want me to do? It's not, no, I'm just asking oh. if you want to do that at a regular council meeting or whether you want to. Oh. Would you guys rather have it separate or at a council meeting? I mean, would you, we're I all here. I, 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 yeah. I, I'd ask him to do it now. Let's yeah. start, start at this. If it gets too out of hand, then we'll maybe we yeah. do a special meeting. Whatever Again. you suggest, we're laying at your feet. Okay. Um, That's fine. Um, I mean, I thought about it. You tell them to cut the music at 10 o'clock. You know, if we ask them to come about 6 30. They anticipate trying to do it right around then, so you don't have to come and wait around too long. It's the loudness, correct? That is the major issue. Is, no, is it music or is it people's know. voices too? Or is that not so bad? It's all of the above. It's the original. They try to speak over the speaker. Uh, right. <laughs> then they get louder and then just keep right. snowballing and then that's become the hot bar of things, I guess. Well, you know, I don't know. Actually it's, the speakers is what generates the majority of the noise and then the people get louder because <coughs> try to speak over the thing. Well what's I, really bad is uh well, that's that good to be poor people. There's no the complaint I issues. have, there's no management like at eleven thirty or twelve o'clock at night. And there's people outside of those picnic tables and they're yelling and screaming and saying all kinds of bad stuff and oh, you know just cussing and it's I know. if he could if he had somebody go out there and control that but i don't see how you could control well, i would think bringing him here and reminding him that you know ultimately council has a say in renewal of liquor licenses am i right about that 
I mean, I think it's something, I don't mean to, you know, I just think it's something that maybe to remind him of that. I don't, I don't mean that in a threatening way. But I mean, the points you make, I'm interested in now. And I mean, some of it, you can only do so much. You know, we got a noise ordinance that starts at 10 o'clock and there's not much we can do about that. And unfortunately, we all know what the lake does to sound. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and, you know, things seem to run in cycles around Portage Lakes in terms of where the hot bar is. And, uh, you know, we've had them come and go and be torn down and rebuilt. And uh, it looks like right now this is a hot bar or one of. Uh, I'm told to so measure. there's just a lot you know you just you know they changed the character of the bar it, you know it wasn't that kind of a bar and yeah because is. The, the issues that upper deck had they, could, mm -hmm. they were easily resolved these because they're not in the neighborhood yeah and they're very limited yeah, and the way that the, the sounds traveling there they're just going to each other's right. yes, they're pointing to each other and, and right. the same problem last week with Dietz's uh, told me he had to reconfigure his band. Right. And now they're pointing toward the grass yeah. across yeah. the lake, so yeah. it's like the battle of the... But it's still just in the okay. afternoon. It's not, it's not nighttime right. activity. Do we have any way to measure? We don't have the yeah. equipment. That's what I'm asking, the equipment. Do we have that uh, capability? No. Do I remember with, the, was it the White House, the upper deck? Yes, the deck. And that is what that lawsuit, I think, was. Didn't that... Didn't that family, I can't remember their name, husband and wife, they were at a meeting years ago. That was ago. a civil lawsuit, mm -hmm. went to court, and they, did. they had to get a decibel yeah. machine. Is that what it's called, a decibel meter? Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. so. And uh, somebody had to go to their house mm -hmm. when the music was playing on Sunday afternoon and have the meter running. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was somebody from... I don't yeah, know. That did, uh, my right. understanding and recollection is that did not involve the township. No, 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 no. no. They filed the a nuisance action and yeah. pleaded yeah. civilly yeah, the, because the, the neighbors town, filed an yes, action. At that time, the township said, These are the laws that That's we have happened. passed. That was a woman that had a son as an attorney. Wasn't that it, Dr. Deck? Bill Love was one. I don't know who, but I remember the woman with his son. I don't think he was there in the current. I, I, I don't know. But I remember right. them having to get a machine of some type to measure that. Mm -hmm. So we're going to ask him to come about 6.30 next week. <coughs> and uh, should see if just, and uh, perhaps we can get him, uh, um, can we get him down sure. a list of these concerns so he'd be in a position to answer some of those things? Al can drop it off. Is that possible, or can we get, yep. get, can we get him a list of these concerns so then we'll yep. give him some time to think about coming here and trying to answer some of these yep. questions? I was hoping that's what happened last time. But, uh, yeah. Also, he was he stated in that last meeting he was going to have his own decibel meter out there, and he was going to measure the noise. Well, we're going to ask him. Right. Is it in here, too? Uh, it's on the back page of the notes. He was going to police some noise on the patio there. He said he was going to do it with the decibel meter. Let's bring him in here and see what he's got to say. That does what you said about the litter. It's just a lot of trash they don't pick up. No, they don't pick up trash. There's trash every morning. Even after people get there, nobody goes out and picks up trash. That was another thing he was going to have people do, is go around the property and pick up trash every morning. That didn't happen either. No. But his overflowing trash cans are a real concern. Yeah, that's what I hope but right by there once around the morning to see nobody is there. All right, well that's Thank you. that's our plan then. See okay. if he can come and talk to us and see if we can help. We wanted you to speak during the committee so that way you didn't have to stay during the meeting now if you don't want to. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll give you Okay. 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 First, we're going to take 10 minutes, we'll get back and start our meeting. Order. The City of New Franklin Council meeting is Wednesday, June 17, 2015, 708. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Mr. Here. Mr. Harvitt? Present. Mr. Harvitt? Present. Mr. Dean? Here. Mr. Cobb? Here. Ms. Norris? Here. Mr. Stock? Here. Thank you. Thank you. All right.
to make a motion to approve the minutes from the regular scheduled meeting of June 3rd, 2015. Second. Any discussion on those minutes? Okay, roll call, please. Ms. Norris? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Mr. Adamson? I'm staying. Mr. Hargett? Yes. Mrs. Jones? Yes. Mr. Neaton? Yes. Mr. Clark? Yes. I'll make a motion to approve the financials for May 2015, subject to audit. Second. First and second, roll call, please. Ms. Norris? Yes. Mr. Stock? Yes. Mr. Adamson? Yes. Mr. Hargett? Yes. Mrs. Jones? Yes. Mr. Dean? Yes. And Mr. Clappas? Yes. Seven to zero. Move into our public comment part of our more, uh, meeting here. Please keep your comments addressed to council in under four minutes and the state your name and your address. Does anybody have anything for us? All right. <clears throat> Moving into our uh, legislation this evening. We have uh, one first reading, two seconds, three, three seconds and three thirds. Start out with resolution 15-R-39. Sponsor Mayor Bolas, a resolution authorizing the transfer of funds and declaring that this resolution shall be effective immediately upon passage. This was a sign of finance. It's a um, relatively routine transfer from general fund to police fund and to dispatch fund, uh, all within budget, all within appropriations. Uh, I move that we waive the uh, requirement of three readings on 15R39. Second. There's a second roll call, please. Mr. Hargett? Yes. Mrs. Jones? Yes. Mr. Dean? Yes. Mr. Clark? Yes. Ms. Norris? Yes. Mr. Stock? Yes. And Mr. Addison? Yes. Pass the 7 0. I move to approve 15 R 39. Second. First and second. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Hargett? Yes. Mrs. Jones? Yes. Mr. Dean? Yes. Mr. Clark? Yes. Ms. Norris? Yes. Mr. Stock? Yes. And Mr. Addison? Yes. And pass the 7 0. Thank you. Moving to uh, ordinance number 15-0-04. Sponsor Mayor Bolas, <clears throat> an ordinance providing for an increase to the New Franklin Municipal Income Tax, which is now levied at the rate of 1% by virtue of New Franklin Ordinance 05053 by adding 1% to the basic income tax rate to make this to make the effective tax rate 2% beginning January 1st, 2016. We uh, have discussed this in committee, and this and the next piece of legislation, I would move that we pass. We may, we we may want to read. move to waive three readings. I'm lost in the slipper. We wrap these up. We can do these together as one? No, no. Okay. no. <laughs> On the first one, then we'll move to uh, waive the three readings. I think we have a stroke. <laughs> <laughs> I'll second that. Okay, the way we're three reading. Okay. We have a first and second. Not the stroke. Mr. Dean? Yes. Mrs. Jones? Yes. Mr. Clark? Yes. Mrs. Norris? Yes. Mr. Stock? Yes. Mr. Dean? Yes. Mr. Addison? Yes. Mr. Hargett? Yes. And Mrs. Jones? Yes. Passes 7 to 0. I'd like to make a motion to adopt resolution. I Fifteen. Dot ordinance. Oh, zero four. Ordinance. 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 Second. First and second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Hargett. Yes. Mrs. Jones. Yes. Mr. King. Yes. Mr. Clark. Yes. Mrs. Norris. Yes. yes. Mr. Stock. Yes. And Mr. Addison. Yes. Passes seven zero. Be good. Resolution 15R-34, Sponsor Mayor Bolas. A resolution declaring the necessity of an election of the question of approving an amendment of the New Franklin Income Tax Ordinance to increase the New Franklin Municipal Income Tax Rate from 1% to 2% beginning January 1st, 2016 and declaring that this resolution shall take effect immediately upon passage. Based on our discussion in the committee, we're going to go ahead and move to waive the three readings. Do I have a second? Second. First and second. Roll call, please. Mr. Harding? Yes. Mrs. Jones? Yes. 
Mr. King? Yes. Mr. Coffin? Yes. Ms. Norris? Yes. Mr. Stock? Yes. Mr. Atkinson? Yes. Passes is seven to zero. No, that was just the way the three readings. And now we're gonna, yeah. gonna make yeah. a motion, motion to, to, adopt. to adopt this piece of legislation. Do I have a second? Second, third. Take it over to the oh, sure. I second. Second. I'm just trying to move the right now. Any discussion? We actually need no. to pass the first one before we can pass the second. Am I correct? We did. You did pass the first one. Yeah. That's what I said. Yes. All right. Roll call, please. Mr. Harkin. Yes. Mrs. Jones. Yes. Mr. Dean. Yes. Mr. Cotton. Yes. Ms. Norris. Yes. Mr. Stock. Yes. And Mr. Addison. Yes. Pass the second. If this is your first time here, usually we got a little better together, but I don't know we're falling apart in that. <laughs> so, all right, thank you. We'll move to resolution number 15-R-36. Sponsor Mayor Bolas, a resolution authorizing New Franklin to prepare and submit an application to participate in the Ohio Public Works Commission State Capital Improvement and or Local Transportation Improvement Programs authorizing the new Franklin finance director to execute a certification of local funds in the amount of $375,000 and declaring that this resolution shall take effect immediately upon passage. This was assigned to finance. This is the second reading. We had discussion in committee. We've had that great support and contributions from various other local entities uh, that put us in good shape for uh, a potential <laughs> approval. Um, from Ohio Public Works for the balance of funds necessary for the road uh, widening. Uh, and that's a project we've talked about for a long time, even before highway distributing decided to come up there. Um, so uh, with that, I would move that we waive the requirement of the third reading on 15R36. Second. First and second roll call, please. Mr. Dean? Yes. Mr. Clark? Yes. Ms. Norris? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Mr. Adamson? Yes. Mr. Hargett? Yes. And Mrs. Jones? Yes. yes. And I move that we approve Resolution 15R36. Second. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Dean? Yes. Mr. Kalapanis? Yes. Ms. Norris? Yes. Mr. Stock? Yes. Mr. Addison? Yes. Mr. Hargett? Yes. And Mrs. Jones? Yes. And David, I think we should add that Jennifer Dick Six did so much work on this. Oh, yeah. And actually, to benefit Jennifer Six did a great job. She did a great she did job. Great. I mean, she rounded up $375,000. Yeah, mm -hmm. $375,000 of she money committed to this project, this project, which is one fourth of the total mm -hmm. amount of the projected project. So that was just super. And I asked Al, too, if maybe she'd come in and just, you know, she's doing a great job. Maybe we get to talk to her and just give us an update on what she's doing. And, Basically, say thanks. Uh -huh. you know? I agree. I think we should. So, if she, you know, I talked to you about that. Maybe she could come in. Good. Yeah. Because it would be nice to say thank you in person. Yeah, that's what I feel. Okay. Yeah. All right. Just on these next three ordinances, uh, all three ordinances 15 0 01, 02, and 03 are going to be, what is that, July 9th? Andrea, he has a meeting with the planning and zoning, so we're going to be keeping these on time, time asking time, yeah, for time. Time granted. We have no pending legislation. We move into the mayor's report. Yes, I want to thank the Girl Scouts uh, for their civil reward project and making the butterfly garden out front at Miracle Park here. Uh, especially Amber, Olivia, and Evie was their uh, jobs and uh, uh, Olivia's mother Daisy DeSanto for all her time. I uh, also want to congratulate three more young men from Boy Scout Troop 118 who will be making Eagle Scout rank this Saturday, June 20th at 5 p.m. at the Manchester United Methodist Church. If anybody wants to go there, you're welcome. That's Matthew Cox, Joshua Cusmitz, and Jess Nicholas, and I'll tell you, that Boy Scout troop puts out the Eagle yeah, Scouts yeah. tremendously. Yeah. Hey. Uh, chip and Seal will begin in a couple of weeks, and we will post signs along the roads being resurfaced, so it won't be a surprise to some people. Um, I wanted to put some signs just up different place, but <coughs> I have a problem with zoning here, so. 
but we'll, we'll get them up, I promise. So. Akron Zoo Community Days for New Frank will be August 25th through 30, 30th, uh, Tuesday through Sunday. We'll not be able to distribute them until after August 10th, according to the zoo, and they will not reprint them. Uh, our, our residents can pick them up uh, at the zoo from August 10th through August 23rd until supply lasts. I make that announcement because they always go fast here. People come in and pick up those tickets for community days. So they're not going to reprint them this time. And I think they usually give us about 100 or 200. And that's it. So I don't know why they won't give our community coventry a little bit more, especially when we pass that levy every year. I, uh, I have a problem with that. I really do. So yeah, let you know. told me it's all happening. It's all happening. This is all happening. I see that. Um, Somebody told you that. Somebody told me it's all happening at the zoo. Okay, when? I do believe it. Right now, right? I do believe it. I do believe it. Uh, two more things. Uh, the Ohio ethics law, can I do that? Is a mandatory employee training that will be held here on Friday, August 21st at 10 o'clock a.m. Can I ask all the employees about to pay him? It's a mandatory thing from the state. Probably take about an hour or two to get certified or whatever they do. Um, August 21st. Uh, August 21st. I recommend that if you can be here too, to be here too because we're going to. That's pretty much mandatory, isn't it? Well, it's. We've, you've made it mandatory for the employees because it's something they need to know. And um, it's good for everybody. And she is an excellent speaker there. Her name is Susan um, Wilkie. She does this presentation nationally, um, if, or around Ohio anyway. And, and uh, she's really good and will learn so much in the two hours that she's here. And, and there's a lot of things. I just saw her again at our conference um, last week. And there's a lot of things that people don't know about the ethics law that are, that are very important that you could be. You could get, uh, you know, there are misdemeanor and felony charges if you don't know, you know, what you can and cannot do. And it's not just elect officials, it's also people that work in the, in the city as well that are subject to these same laws. What's the time? 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10 to 12. It's a Friday. Yeah. And what? August 21st. Um, one more thing, the second half of 2014, real estate taxes are due July 17th. And that's all I have. Thank you. All right, thanks, Doc. Susan, finance report? Um, our May uh, ending balance was $2,587,767.44. Um, we are um, scheduled for our live conversion um, about the second week in July. Um, so I put out to all the department heads and told them so that they've told us that for that week, basically, our physical, our physical office is not totally down, but anything on the computer, checks or whatever you need, we're down for that week because they have to change the, do the conversion of the data and get us up and verify things. So we've asked everybody to kind of bear with us during that week because we will they'll be in here and uh, we'll be going through things. To, to make sure that we're up and running. But we've been having ongoing training on that. But What week was it, Susan? I apologize. I believe it's the second week. I don't have the dates right second off the top of my head in July. Um, but yeah, we will be hopefully not pulling our hair out too much. That's all I've got. Go to old business. Uh, I guess I'll speak on Nexus. I'm getting, uh, I've become a contact person for the Franklin Township Trustees Cemetery because uh, the Nexus gas transmission line, I did not realize was going to come near the boundary of the cemetery. Not, I don't think it's the 42 inch or the 36 inch line, right? It's, it's oh no, I think this is a big one. Robert, hey. is there Zero line. Are you getting the same letters? No, I didn't receive that. I got a phone call too. Uh, they wanted to know my opinion as, as you know, as the 
cemetery person. They must know something I don't know. Uh, but anyway, I have directed them to. Yeah, yeah. I told them to. This is their, I suggested they redirect this to the to the administration. Uh, in fact, the young lady was going to um, drop off some materials at my office. I said, well, "Why don't you take it to the administration?" Did that happen? Did you see the cemetery from Nexus? They from Nexus? Yeah, yeah, it's from Nexus. Uh, proposed Nexus gas transmission project located in Summit County uh, yeah. to help us refine our proposed route. Uh, representatives have, have begun collecting and evaluating existing information. You are receiving this letter because your property may be within or very near the routing study corridor. Um, and uh, well, no, I don't. Uh, but I was, I, I don't know, at some point in time my name got associated. So uh, I'm bringing it to all of our attentions and I suggested that they. You know, and, and basically, she wanted to know my opinion. I said, "Well, I think you should stay out of Summit County." Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I'd been to I'd been down to you know one of their open houses, and it was a respectful conversation. And uh, and, and I was told, you know, and I said that we're more in favor of the, the uh, in fact, that we passed legislation in support of the proposed line that Green submitted. Um, and she told me that uh, they were having discussions about trying to make some movements in the line, not necessarily consistent with what Green was doing, but more consistent with, you know, it was staying away from the residential areas, so. Well, which cemetery? I'll ask that. I don't know the I answer. I asked her, she wasn't able to tell me. I, I don't know if it's... Did you send you a map? Well, it's a, yeah, it's a map's very She just gave me the, you know, this is just the, <laughs> the here's a map. Oh, yeah. 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 Like the Bowman, Ontario. Yeah. Uh, the last we saw was South of Jaeger, the last one. That yeah. was planning, so maybe, uh, I guess I'm just bringing it up because I was contacted and I'll, anything I get, I'll pass on to council. But I, I suggested that she, you know, bring it to the attention of the administration instead. And obviously we're going to need to keep an eye on that. That's all I had. Thanks, Paul. <coughs> yes, I got it. Did we hear anything about the locker field stuff? The school yes, the school board adopted their resolution and I have sent the documents this week to the title company to start the title work and get it transferred. So we're looking at probably by the end of July it should be done. Yep, no, very, yeah, everything's in order and it's it's, it's moving along. Because then now we're going to be talking about some things going on down there, maybe some fencing around the place, and we talked about mm -hmm. widening out that drive coming in. And so. It was a quorum last night, because like everybody still had some baseball games, and Jody had a, a rotator cuff surgery done, and uh, Larry Ray was out of town, he's in Arizona, so, but we did discuss one of the main things that we'd like to get on is to do a geological study of the grounds there to see why they have to keep on filling a couple areas. Remember, there was a mine area at one time. There's a mine shaft down through there. We want to make sure everything's safe. I mean, we've played there for 40 years. So. One of the main entrances are right down there. I'm one sorry? The, one of the main entrances down that goes down under is down there. We've always had trouble with that. So, All the years I've been involved with youth football, we think about it, digging or talk to GPD. No. To drill. Do some drilling and stuff just to find out why. It's not very much, but I just want to be safe. Mm -hmm. Robin, do you have that old mine of the map still? I have to look on that to see if I can. Yeah. She has an old map of all the old mines. The ones that were plotted. Yeah, I sent away to the. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't mean it. No, you're good. That's right. I think the fire department has all that too. So. Yeah, I sent away to the, the state, the mine. Uh, Group there, and they sent me a big, huge map of New Franklin. And Great. Let's see if I can dig it out. Pull it out. That's good. GPD should have them on my property. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You do have mines mm -hmm. in your front. The shafts run across the back here in the basement. Also, going back, I guess, to real estate, we talked about this property up here we got in by Luigi's. Yes. I'm, I'm so with, uh, Brooks Ames and I met with Brooks and haven't heard back yet. Okay. <laughs> Any other old business anybody could think of? Old business recycling. Recycling. Oh, that's new business. Sorry. <coughs> that's old stuff. Well, it's old that's stuff. But oh, we'll wait until you go to new new business. It's old stuff. It's just, okay. But that was a new new thing today. Yes. <coughs> All right. New 
business. Recycle. Yes, recycle. <coughs> I guess since I'm going to talk a little bit about if it's going to be new now about the income tax, and we've discussed it before, the income tax affects, which we figured the last time, about 10% of the people actually live here. Most <coughs> they also live somewhere else and pay their percent of taxes. So, you know, we try to do a police levy and our police levies are old. We're not getting as much money from the state as we used to get for, you know, doing our roads and stuff. So this is just something that we thought would be, and we let people make the decision, but it could help us out considerably on moving forward with, you know, projects we'd like to do. So, well, we're just going to have to get the word out about, you know, we're going to have to let people know exactly how it works, who it affects, who it don't affect. You know, the retired people don't affect pensions. So, I mean, it's a good way to, you know, generate income within the city without going to the, all the landowners for property tax. So I'm just going to keep on bringing that up as we move forward towards this. Any other new business? You did get my information when I emailed you about the question you asked, speaking of income tax, about the, uh, the uh, estimated tax that right now, obviously you can set up the baseline through an ordinance, but as of the January 1st of next year, with that with House Bill 5, it will be set at $200 across the board for everyone, and we won't have any recourse on that. There are some other <coughs> major things that are going to change. For example, we were talking about this today. One of I went to a seminar with Rita and, and CCA that went over it. One of the things that's kind of different, in our legislation for the income tax, it used to be it, you would, if you won the lottery, if you didn't make over 5000 during the course of a year, then, then you didn't have to, to pay income tax on that money. But now, with House Bill 5, whatever you win is taxable, starting with the first dollar. Mm -hmm. Uh, for that two dollars I went on a scratch. Yes, yeah, so Very you're going to be paying tax on that money. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you, Susan. Are there any other new business? All right, does anybody have any questions for us? That we uh, anything we uh, any issues we raised this evening at the meeting? From an AP twelve fifteen Center Road, any questions on the income tax? How much does it generate today, today? Uh, in funds or over the last? Year or so? I have, I, you, I have it right here. Too. Oh, okay. Good. Okay. Last year, 2014, uh, $1,147,010.13. $1, and, and that 5% that went to the parks, which that's in our uh, charter. charter there, Judy. That was uh, over $57,300 went to four parks out of that one. So. Okay. I so you would, would, would double that, Robert. Would double yeah, it, and we would, paid the collection fees out of that total was a little over forty-three thousand. What we paid for you. Understood. I read in the paper where it was going to add an additional one point one million. Is that? Yeah, it just would be doubled. Yeah, one yeah. percent. Okay, so it's that's just estimated at the okay one point one four seven right now that we did okay, so in two thousand fourteen. Yeah. So two two is kind of the ballpark we're looking at. Then? Just yeah. two, yeah, two percent. No, two million. Two, two, oh, two yeah, points. Yeah, 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 you double two, the one yeah. point. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm just trying. Yeah. So they yeah. over two yeah. million. Yeah. Yeah. And two, and and basically, with all the fee, I mean, things that go elsewhere. Yeah. Right? Based but, yeah. on yeah, based on the current so amount, yes. Okay. But with the new with the new House Bill Five coming in, we're it's probably going to be a little bit less with see. the new reg regulations. But yeah. Okay. And then one final question. Um, what other avenues of saving money were pursued prior to saving the increase the income tax? Were there any other we've been reductions in expenses? To, we've been watching everything we possibly can. It's just that we're getting less money and we're, more money's going out as far as just in, in scale. I mean, we got fire department, police department, their sal you know, salaries are going up, wages are going up. It's costing more to do business now and we're not getting as much. So this 1% is gonna affect the least amount of people. Mm -hmm. You know, it ain't gonna affect me. Most of the time I'm working where I'm paying two or more than 2%. So we're not gonna be going after anybody that's retired out here and that. And, you know, we try to do a police levy, you know, road levies or, I mean, 
just stuff's just running out. We're, our police levy and all that road, all that stuff goes down. And millages, they pay less and less every year. So this is a good opportunity to put it out there and let's see what people think mm -hmm. about what's going to be a good way to move forward. There's some things we'd like to do, you know, paving in that. It's getting more expensive. We're doing less roads because there's just not that money there anymore. We're you know we're losing. We're getting less and have to pay out more. Just just like everybody basically paying more for gas now, right? Probably making too much more money. So you got to figure out how you're going to do that. So in our situation, that's we can't say okay, we're not going to patrol the streets anymore because we're going to save on gas. But th that's not an option for us. You know, we can't send the police on a bus to go to a call, you know. So that's what we've talked about, been talking about it for a while. You know, what's going to be the best way? And, for you know, that way it lets people make the decision, you know. So. How much of that new 1.1 1 .1 will go to the police department? Well, let me, let me see this. <clears throat> It all goes into the general yeah, fund. Yeah, right, right now, the current income, the revenue for police, the tax levies, mm -hmm. are bringing in $868,554. $868,554. Okay, of that, the budget is what? About $1.6 million. So we're, we're taking $800,000, dollars what was it, six fifty, six hundred and fifty out of the general fund to pay for that, well, we could use that money for some capital improvements that we need or some infrastructure, or it's a matter of time before we're going to have to do something serious. I understand. You know? I'm just trying to get an idea so I understand. No, 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 no. I understand. That's that a good question. If you're saying, if, I don't mean to carry on this conversation. No, anyway, it's good. I'm, I'm trying to understand the income tax so I can decide. What I'm doing. What we so, lost the uh, uh, state tax. And I've been watching that. And the I'm local government the funds, which is a quarter, about three quarters of a million dollars over the course of, I think, both of them. Right. But uh, to speak like with Jeff, when he says we have to do uh, Vanderhoof Road, needs repaid, like 1.4, 1.5 yes. million. That's today's price, too. Yeah. And that, that's all us. We get no, there's no grant application for that road alone. So in order for us to do our 300000 worth of paving, that's five years of paving no other roads but that one if we have no other money coming in. Mm -hmm. So that, that's why we're at this point. I, I mean, we cut everywhere. You know, I, I tried the unions and I tried yeah. it. But it is I what understand. it is. I'm just trying to grasp in my mind. No, it's all good. If we bring in an additional $1 million, and I'm just throwing that number out, it could, it'll be depending on <laughs> the fees that we have to pay. An additional $1 million, how much are you anticipating to go to support the police department Capital improvements, and I believe the other thing was in the paper if or have, on the video. Uh, general operations. If you have Do you guys have an idea dollars, of how that will be split? If you have one point one million dollars minus six hundred and fifty thousand dollars, is what? This is a million because I don't want to. Do, but okay, so sixty percent of the new, right. new income tax will go to support the police. Is that a good? Well, assumption, and then the remaining forty percent, depending on how you do your five-year, you got five percent in parts. What do you got? Five percent in parts. Okay, okay. I'm just seconds. using. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We're already yeah. supporting the police department. Yeah, exactly. out of the funds that we already have. Yeah. 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 You're not going to pay all that. So if we don't have, if we don't, you know, if we don't get an income tax, if this doesn't pass, we're still going to spend eight hundred thousand dollars out of the general fund towards the police department. So the answer to the question is, how much of the million dollars? Zero. None is going to the police department because we're already funding the police department. It comes out of the same fund, the general fund. So it still goes in. I understand that wrong. But there's like some of these water entrapment things that we need done around the city to stop the water down. Those are projects that could possibly come out in the future of this. More money to pave roads with could possibly come out of that money. You know, more money for the police could possibly come out of that money. It goes into the general fund. So there could be more going to the park system. We could uh, do something with Lockhart Field now that we have it. It's all, you know, just, so, it, it's money you. that we could use for the benefit of the city I in every know. avenue because it comes from the general fund. I understand that, uh, but in, a, in the video that I watched of the last meeting, yes. it said it was going to help the police department, the income tax. So it was going to help the police department, it was going to be for capital expenditures and general operations. And, and, and I mean, so I'm just so trying to get an idea 
There is no. And I understand that we keep taking money out of the general fund yes. to support the police department. That I understand. So what, what, it, what, what should we do with the police? You're well, getting at something. No, no. What do you want us to do with the police? You're no, getting all I'm asking, I'm you're trying to get in my head happened. that you're asking for mo more money out of my pocketbook. Okay, that's all I, Wait, I'm trying to do. Wow, that's. I'm trying to get an idea. You're asking for a million dollars in income tax. And we're not just sitting up here wondering how we're going to spend it. If we get it, we need to spend a million more dollars this year. We're looking down the road, Robin. Do you understand that? Yes, it's like these steps. I'm looking down. I'm trying to get an idea. I mean, down an extra million dollars. It's not. What's the plan? If the income tax We just got done telling you. How do you want us to explain it to you more? I'm asking you. something, Robin. You need to let us know what you're getting at. And I thought I'd explain it, Mr. Stock, and I'll try one more time. And then no, you didn't. You didn't explain it very well. May I try one more time, Mr. Stock? Yeah, Stock? one more time. And then we're I'm trying to get in my head, if you're going to, if this income tax passes, there'll be a million more dollars coming into the city. What is the plan for that extra million dollars? Okay, you're, you're During the video, oh. it said, and this was the last council mm -hmm. meeting, that it was going to help the police department, capital improvements, and general operations. I'm just trying to get an idea of that, if a million dollars comes in, an extra million, do you have a plan for that extra million? You're already funding the city with what you have now at 1.1. Anyway, right, let me attempt to answer that question for you. Did I, did I make myself clear? Yeah, what, what I got it. I thought we did. I did. All right, and it, it's a fair question. So let me, let me attempt this. The additional funds, and I, I can't speak to what was in the video, Two weeks ago, I was not here. Uh, if it was if it was mentioned that it was going to help the police department, I would, in my view, it would ease the strain on the general fund that is currently assisting or that we're dedicating towards the police department, without the necessity of putting a property tax on, which is the alternative because we don't want to put a property tax on. So, the, the answer number one. If any of the additional million dollars went to the police department, in my view, it would be a negligible amount. It would be a very small percentage. Let's assume there's some things in the police department they'd like to do they haven't been able to do. Okay, they're already funded to the tune of 1.6 million with existing funds. So, would there be some additional money? Perhaps. In my guess, it would be you know less than five percent. I haven't pulled that number out of the air. Probably be less than two percent. All right. So, what would what would happen with the rest of the money? Well, we were on a we were on a on a plan here with the roads of about three hundred thousand a year on the roads. We have not been able to do that. We are behind on the roads. So one of the things the funds would be used for, in my view, would be to try to get back up to speed on the roads. Not all at once, but as needed. Uh, you know, another major area is what we referred to the last time as the as the rainy day fund, the carryover fund. You know, we're not in you know we're not in the position of carryover that we ought to be in, in my view. We ought, to, we ought to have about 25% or 30% of our annual budget as a carryover every year. That's just prudence. We were at that point, at, you know, years ago. We're not there now. So if we did nothing with that million dollars but bank it for the first year, we would probably be maybe statistically in a position that we were in seven or eight years ago as a city, which would be a sound financial situation for the city because we don't know what kind of emergencies might arise. So, you know, those two things, and then we hear things like Vanderbilt. So, so in my view, the funds would go towards, uh, when we say okay, there is no specific plan, and that's a good thing in my view, to say, okay, if we get a million, here's how it's gonna be spent next year. You know, 300,000 to the police, 200, th no, there's no such plan, and that's a good thing. Nobody's, there's no plan up here to spend this money before it even comes in. I mean, we're, we're operating okay. But I think, so, you know, and, and I, that's, not a, that's not a comment for or against the income tax. That's just basically my understanding. I think it's a fair assessment of, of, of uh, what council's general intention, what the administration's intentions would be, would be to try to put us back in a healthy situation uh, and, and try to plan for the future. Because, you know, once that happens, I, you know, there is no other source of income really after that. One. And, and the costs are going to continue to go up, um, and revenue sources are going to probably continue to go down. So, it's really I hope that's helpful. Thank you, Mr. Adams. Really replaced inflation. I mean, we're replacing money that takes us back ten years. You know, we're replacing that money, and that's you know, you're going to be at a point here in a year or two 
where you're going to have to do something major to just keep going. Now, if you can think of any cuts, then why don't you bring them forward and let us know where, where the cuts could be. It'd be great. Because I don't know if anybody here could think of any more cuts. You know, and you're not talking, bro, I'm not talking $100 a year and $50 there, you know. What are we supposed to do? It's down, getting down to the nitty gritties here. Got to do something. All you have to do is look. Look at this stuff right on the Friday. Thank you. Anybody Thanks. else have anything for Constance? All right, no need for executive session. If I can make a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Next council meeting is July 1st, 2015. Council meeting immediately after the meeting meetings at 6.